Okay, uh, I'm here with Cameron Stevens from Realware. Uh, Cameron presented during our webinar on 11 August on inspection surveys and audits. Uh, as the webinar was not recorded, uh, but we still wanted to have something to refer to, we are here again today to record his presentation and answer questions raised during the meeting. Welcome Cameron, uh, please st start your presentation. Thanks mate, uh, thanks for inviting us back. Uh, it was a really great event on the 11th of August and um, good to be here again to just uh, recap that presentation. So it was a pretty rapid fire presentation, short and sharp, trying to showcase how wearable technology can improve dropped objects inspections and the, assist, the, the processes that sit around that. So I don't particularly want to be focusing on real wear specifically, but kind of showcasing wearable technology and emerging technologies and how that can improve uh, dropped objects and health and safety related to, to dropped objects prevention. So what I'm wearing on my head right now is a wearable computer. Uh, in this case, it's the Realware HMT1 head mounted tablet. I'm going to show you uh, the feed that is coming through my uh, little LCD display pod here. So to me, it looks like I'm wearing, uh, I'm looking at a seven inch tablet at arm's length. Uh, but to you, it will be uh, cast onto the screen. So the old, will just let me share my screen quote. You have disabled my sharing, so you're just going to give me host rights. All the right. old uh, Make all Zoom host. dance. There you go. I haven't said, can you hear me yet? So uh, <laughs> I'll come up soon enough. Okay, here's my screen. I am going to ask, can you see my screen? They're joking. It's all working, yes. Perfect. So as I said before, what you can see, hide help, is my wearable computer, my HMT1, and the feed is cast so that you can see that too. So this is a fully voice activated wearable computer, leaving my hands completely free to do the tasks I need to do, critically important with dropped objects, uh, so that I can actually uh, potentially do rope access, work at height, uh, and perform those inspections using my hands, which are critical to do so. So I talk to the device, it's responsive to 14 different languages, and it will uh, allow me to do a whole variety of different things, which I'll demonstrate to you as it relates to dropped objects. So it could be up uh, the derrick, a mast, or doing an inspection on the ground, and I can activate my camera and take photos and videos. My camera. So here I've got a, a hook. Take photo, preview. And what I've done is I've allocated a set of uh, predefined tag sets specifically related to dropped objects, manage tags, dropped object, priority one, non-conformance, apply tags. So those tags are now embedded into that photo. I could email that photo. I could uh, have it synced and uploaded to my OneDrive account and then uh, directed through to external stakeholders or anyone else that needs to see the photo. And those tags will be embedded into that file. Delete, confirm. So I could be up doing my inspection again and record a video, record video. So I'm just having a look at this hook and I'm wanting to confirm whether or not this is a compliant split pin or not. Stop recording. Preview. So I'm just having a look at this hook and I'm wanting to confirm whether or not this is a compliant split pin or not. Stop recording. And you can see the use cases there as it relates to dropped objects is I can do my full inspection pre-recorded have it on my headset or um, again, work flowed through to a work order management system. Uh, just, I could connect my uh, computer to uh, my PC and download that video file. I could use it for training later. There's a lot of different uh, use cases, particularly with shift handover. If you wanted to record any issues that have occurred on the preceding shift, perhaps it was an incident investigation they can be, the photos and videos can be captured voice, uh, through voice, hands-free, 
and um, then used for whatever purposes later. Navigate home. So then we have the filing structure. There is no connectivity required to do that uh, camera functionality. So I, I don't need any internet connection. I can be you know, in the red zone and be walking through doing my inspections and I don't actually need to have um, any connectivity. This, uh, I wasn't gonna to focus too much specifically on Realware, but there are, Realware does have an intrinsically safe version for those that do ask. Uh, and um, there are wearable um, devices on the market that can be used in different industrial contexts. My files. So here I've, uh, I've loaded onto my headset some drops related information. So in this case, it's a video alert from the regulator. So many years ago when I was uh, working offshore, um, when NOPSEMA was NOPSA for those uh, Australian viewers. Select item seven. This video safety alert has been produced by NOPSA to share information from an incident investigation. Video so stop. Very... So obviously I can watch videos. They can be geofenced to turn on or turn off. Uh, at an area where I'd like to see those videos with some uh, ad additional um, software that I could load onto the headset to do that. So um, the video alerts there, you know, the dropped object, video stop, mute microphone. There you go, won't, won't uh, activate now that I've done that. But uh, it could be something like from, from the drops uh, website, there's a whole lot of uh, videos and, and case studies and alerts and information that could be loaded onto the device. I've got a whole series here that we'll quickly run through. Uh, what have we got here? Drops month. So some promotional material about drops month can be loaded on the headset for people to see when they're out in the field. Obviously you can't see realistically that well what that looks like. So I can zoom in and navigate through that page using the gyro uh, on board the computer, the HMT. Zoom level three. So there we go, I can now have a look at that information and read that. And all of my documentation, my checklists, dropped objects checklists, supervisory checklists, cargo checklists can all be loaded onto the headset. Navigate back. Split pins. Here's some guidance on split pin diameters. I know when we did our live uh, presentation, there was a, a presentation about split pin diameters and I quickly loaded this on at the time so that we could show how you could look at that reference material on a wearable computer. Navigate back. Drops guideline. So for documents, uh, product manuals, data sheets, things that are of large page numbers, in this case I can uh, this one's got 84 pages. I can navigate through using my voice to any page. Go to page 11. Go to page 12. Go to page 70. Go to page 73. Zoom level two. And I can have a look at the information on that page. Navigate back. Cargo checklist. So here I've got a, an inbound cargo checklist uh, on the headset that I'm looking at here, zoom level two. I could have a look through this and go and do those checks, or I could use a digitally assisted workflow and I can assign evidence to those work order, uh, to those checks uh, using um, a, a software layer, which I'll show you now. Navigate home, my programs, maintenance, So in this case, I do need, um, I need connectivity to download the procedures onto my headset, but once they're on, again, I don't need any um, internet connection to be doing these inspections. Select item three. Select item one. Start. Open images. So the check, uh, checklist that I had uh, in my documents there, I've loaded into this specific software layer. There are many software layers that work on Android-based tablets, such as Realware. And um, in this case, I've uh, selected a particular software layer called Space One, which enables me to do that. Navigate back. 
what I've done is I've digitized the, the different checks. Uh, so in this case, it's um, checking the compliance plate uh, includes the date and inspection. I can now take a photo of that and I'll, uh, that will be entered into my checklist. And at the end, I'll have a PDF report which includes all of my checks and I haven't had to use my hands at all. So it reduces the administration burden. I can just use my voice to go through each check. And uh, obviously the benefits there are being able to com complete your drops inspections, have other people look in to see what you're doing if you would like to cast your feed live and make a live call to a subject matter expert, your feed could be directed straight into the doghouse, uh, straight into the up to the bridge, or anywhere around the world to an office for people to actually see what you see in real time. And you can do that at any time in this software layer by saying request assistance or, and there we go, um, I can call myself now and, and, uh, and do that. And then you'll see my feed live and I can annotate on my feed, ask questions of any of the checklist items that I have and then have that report completely done. Um, so certainly with my experience with dropped objects inspections, particularly if it's being done at height, post drilling, you might be up the derrick needing to do a 25, 30 point dropped objects inspection. I can do that and other people can have additional eyes on, uh, in my point of view, to give me guidance and say, oh, would you mind checking that part? Uh, we did heavy drilling, some jarring, so check the, the bolts on this area. And again, that can be done. Um, in that instance, you would require connectivity. And in the case of the HMT1, that's through Wi-Fi or a, um, a hotspot to a, a, a 4G connection or through a modem that's connected uh, via USB on the headset. Navigate home. So the last thing I wanted to do is to show you that some of the sophisticated analytics that you can get. So if you've taken lots of photos or videos, um, I'll show you now a photo that I took of a crane logbook. Uh, the crane logbook data I took with my phone. It could be a permit, like a working at heights permit. And if there's handwritten text, there's sophisticated software layers that can marry up with wearable computers. Uh, you can run analytics on those to extract keywords or information and really start to predict and monitor and to get trends out of some of the data you're getting with your drops inspections. Um, I'll quickly show you that and then we'll probably wrap up. So I'll just show you the, an example of that um, photo taken of a, uh, of a crane booklet crane logbook, handwritten, fairly representative of what you might see in a, in a cabin, handwritten. I can extract metadata, optical character recognition from that photo. I can then workflow that information into my work order management system. You can see over here the, um, the text that has come off. So, I could take photo of a, of a data sheet, data plate on a crane, could be a safe work limit uh, or a certificate of rigging. I could take photos with my, with my head mounted tablet and then from there extract that text, workflow that text, gain keyword insights and really start to look into the future of work about how we can manage these risks with um, using the power of computing, artificial intelligence, machine learning and uh, all of the benefits that those technologies can bring to really step changing the safety of work. So thanks for the opportunity to present. Joe, have you uh, got any questions? I'll stop sharing my screen, maybe give you uh, uh, the, the rights to get to be the host, or have you got them now? Yeah, we both have them. So we, we uh, anyway, we're not we're not sharing uh, any any presentation anymore. Well, thanks thanks very much, uh, Cameron. That is really very interesting. Um, so I'll I'll first go over a few questions that were asked during the um, uh, webinar. Uh, so how does how well does it uh, the head mounted camera um, operate? under noisy, uh, in noisy uh, conditions. So will the voice command still still be heard properly? Uh, and perhaps to add to that as well is, is you know, my Siri never understands me. Does it understand uh, Dutch English as well? Yeah, right. So good questions. Um, 
a, a few answers there in a so in terms of the HMT, this specific hardware, the, the Realware HMT has, you know, it's an award-winning device as it relates to its algorithm for noise capture. It has excellent noise caps, uh, cancellation and, an, and a, a proprietary algorithm that picks up noise with no training. It picks up voice with no training. So you can speak to the device in 14 different languages, which includes um, also with cloud dictation, we've got the ability to pick up uh, UK North Sea type accents, uh, Indian accent English, uh, Aussie accent English, so a, a US English. So if I want to say aluminium and my American friends want to say aluminium, then uh, it will pick up that um, those, those uh, voice commands. Uh, the software layers are designed really intelligently so that um, the, the, com the commands and the, the voice activation of the device minimizes the chance of that not being picked up in high noise environments by using multiple syllables. For example, NatVit gate back. Uh, it has enough syllables and enough really nuanced um, uh, pronunciation so that no matter what accent I say that in, it's more likely to pick that up. If I said, HP compressor B, then B could be picked up as B, three, tree, Z, free, and my accent would, would um, very much go into that. So there's some intelligent design in relation to these wearables. It's not just, um, you know, out it comes. There's a lot of thought that's been put into that. But the, the technology that Realware has is um, the, the algorithm works with no active noise cancellation to 95 decibels and realistically, I've, I've worn the headset in 100, 105 decibels worth of uh, noise, and it has excellent accuracy um, with a combination of both that algorithm and the smart design of the software layers. So it can be used in high noise environments. And in, with the Realware h and there is uh, accessories that give you um, hearing protection, you know, class five hearing protection, 33 decibels of noise reduction. Um, which connects into the three and a half mil jack that I can wear when I'm doing my inspection. Excellent. Okay. Um, well, this is a drops uh, webinar. So of course this question will be asked. Um, does it have, um, uh, does it need to uh, have some secondary securing to, n to not become a dropped object itself? Yeah. Good. Again, good question. So the, um, the HM, as, I, as I speak to this is related to the HMT, the HMT has um, clips that are designed to mount to hard hats. Those uh, clips are designed by industrial designers and tested to make sure that they are fitted correctly. Um, there is the ability to add secondary retention to the device. From a, uh, is it going to break if it drops perspective, which is probably not the best thing to talk about in a dropped objects forum. This hardware is ruggedized to the point that you can drop it from two meters at any angle. It's been tested to hit concrete from two meters at any angle and not break. Um, having said that, because we are talking drops, we definitely don't want to be dropping. Um, so you'd have uh, two independent clips that would clip into a hard hat or some form of Petzl hard hat for rope climbing. I'm wearing mine on a wear band. There's two independent clips. So it's unlikely that one clip will fail and then the other without some intervention. So that's the first set of controls. The second set of controls is having a clip to the, um, at the back of the headset. So the back of the headset can clip onto the hard hat with secondary retention. And then the third, if you really want, is you can have tertiary retention clipped onto your coveralls like you would with your normal hard hat. Um, uh, or you can actually have a, a, a mounting come around with your chin strap. So there's a few different options there for drops. Great, great. So let's hope uh, we won't see uh, <laughs> your camera on the really don't want to see a drop HMT. That would be uh, that, would, that wouldn't be um, wouldn't be fun, would it? All right. So um, I think the next one. I, I know. I think I know the answer, but it will be good for you to clarify. Um, is it required to, to have a secondary screen to operate uh, the device? So, in, no, it's basically just like you would have, this is a, effectively a tablet 
in a wearable form factor. Mm -hmm. So I have a small screen in here that I can use to visualize what's going on. The only other screen that would be required is someone else that's visualizing my feed. Just like if you can imagine WhatsApp, you've got, you know, the person on their phone with a WhatsApp and the other person has to have a screen to see what you're typing or what your, what your videos are. You know, if, if I'm doing a Microsoft Teams call or if I'm doing a, a Zoom call or, I mean, I could dial into this call that we're having right now with my HMT and you would see my feed. You need obviously a screen to be able to visualize that. Other, it's a, it's a fully contained unit, uh, has its own battery power. Uh, in this case, hot swappable battery, eight to 10 hours worth of battery life. It is its own unit um, that's fully contained. It's a tablet in a wearable form factor. Okay. So you mentioned a bit about remote connection, but, but basically you could have somebody who is, let's say, fresh trained uh, with, with his errata training, uh, got his tickets, um, no experience with drops, could go up with this headset under guidance um, by somebody who is um, a very experienced, but perhaps not able to climb the ropes. Is that kind of a concept uh, being applied often? Absolutely. So it, for Realware, this, we call the Realware HNT1 a knowledge transfer platform. So that, that's how we class what the product is. And that's the same with other wearable computers that are out in the market. Ultimately, they're a knowledge transfer, a transfer method. Uh, Android class wearable tablet, that has the ability to facilitate those types of transactions to occur. So training, in-situ training, uh, over-the-shoulder guidance, uh, transferring knowledge from one person to another is the business that we're in. So that use case that you just described uh, is, is a classic use case and an even really classic use case for something like Realware because your hands are completely free and you need your hands free when you're climbing ropes. Yep. So that's exactly the type of um, use cases we're seeing. COVID-19 has accelerated that, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so vendor inspections, remote inspections, uh, in the offshore oil and gas environment, you know, there's limited bed space. It's even limit, more limited now. Uh, anything that can be done to save bed space but continue to do integrity inspections and those sorts of things, this is being used for that purpose uh, all over the world. Absolutely. Excellent. So you mentioned it, it, it runs on, on Android. Um... I know a lot of inspection companies have, have recently um, or some already for several years, um, but invested in, in their own software on, on tablets as well as um, databases they, they connect to. Um, what would be typically the transition uh, from that to, to this, this kind of technology? So, yeah, I mean, the ideal scenario is to have an Android application just like you would... Um, on your Samsung tablet or your, your Android your Google Pixel or whatever, you just have an Android application that you would boot up. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I talked about before some of the nuances around voice activation. If you can just picture you, I, I, because I'm not using my hands, I'm not swiping, I'm not clicking and I'm not scrolling. I'm using my voice. So those applications need to be optimized. And by that, it means it needs to be rethought of that application needs to be thought of about how would I control that application using my voice? So the, the, it, it's not, it's not an, an arduous or an expensive journey to get there. It just requires some thought and consideration. Mm -hmm. And the way that certainly Realware works is we provide guidance and support for that partner network to get their applications working on, on the Realware devices. Um, so there is a specific uh, process that, software vendors would follow to make sure that their application is going to have a good user experience because there's nothing worse than someone out in the field that, you know, that um, IRATA rope access uh, technician uh, not having a good experience with software. That's the least of their worries. Then the software needs to be well optimized. And that's the approach that Realware takes. You can use, um, you can never get through web applications. Um, Obviously, because it's Android, it doesn't support iOS, um, so uh, Apple-based um, applications. But other than that, a bit of optimization and should be good to rock and roll. 
good, good. Yeah, and in the end, all those applications are built with the same kind of software anyway, right? So for a company that has transitioned from uh, paper-based or Excel-based checklists to uh, a tablet, tablet kind of inspection, would it be fair to say that they've actually already done most of the heavy lifting and, and, and transitioning to your kind of platform is only a, a small additional step? Yeah, look, absolutely. In, in principle and in theory, yes. Um, the only caveat to that with my safety professional background coming in here is was the digitization of that paper-based process into the digital process, was it just verbatim? Was it just drag and drop the hundred items into hundred items digital? If it's that, then yes, yeah, certainly you've done the digitization, but I believe there's a real effort to be able to slimline down the, criti the critical steps that are required in an inspection checklist. Mm -hmm. Does it need to be a hundred items? If I look back to the question, have they done the heavy lifting? Absolutely. If they're already on a tablet, all they're doing is sticking it into a wearable form factor. So they've already done it. It is very little that they need to do to get this type of technology enabling their business. But I would say that with a word of caution that if they haven't reimagined how that paper checklist went when they went into digital, are they really going to generate value just by having gone digital onto tablets? Because we, you know, we've been using tablet based uh, and digitized checklists for you know, at over 10 years at least uh, now. And the wearable, sorry, the, the mobile devices are making it easier. But if we haven't had a good look at exactly what we're actually doing to start with and slimming it right down to critical steps, uh, we have the potential to be missing the mark and just uh, kind of creating a little bit of uh, a digital confusion with folks. Um, so my advice for people that are wanting to start out to digitize their drops and potentially extend to wearable is have a look at the checklists and the tasks that are being done now and really focus on what's critical. What are those things that have the potential to cause fatalities? Start with those. What are the issues around asset integrity? Make sure that those things are captured. All of the other things like the day, the time, the location, use the onboard GPS, use the onboard data that's going to capture that, that doesn't need to be three or four items. I don't need the location, the, the date, the time, which rig, that's all pre-populated. So slim down those checklists so that we're meaningful, minimize the time and effort that people have to have when they're working at heights, doing their drops inspections, and we'll definitely be working in a safer way. Excellent. Yeah. And of course, you know, companies implementing this wouldn't just do it with the view of drops, they, they kind of look at it holistically in their, in their organization. Um, okay, some really fancy, fancy technology. I, I, I always like to, to you know, look at the future. What, what, do you see, what do you see yourself with, the, with this technology uh, uh, co coming up and, and what, what further impro improvements do you see happening in the coming years? So I think, um, so, for those that are interested in kind of looking into this as a, as a field, emerging field, particularly as it relates to improving health and safety is the concept of the connected worker. So a worker being connected to the asset, to the plant, the people, the processes through wearable computing to me is an emerging field and emerging practice. If I predict into the future, what I see is all workers being connected with the information in some way. So they'll have, the ability to access that information in situ and uh, technology such as realware is this first step to extending out of the office. So if you think right now, people are in the office getting their documents and their drawings and their permits and all the rest, they should be able to have that at their fingertips. Now with the, with improved connectivity and the ability for the worker to access the internet, wherever they are, that information, will be potentially superimposed in their field of vision when they need it to and turned off when they don't need it. They should be able to have access to whatever information they need, whatever engineer they need. Long should be gone the scenario where, oh, I couldn't get access to the engineer or the information that I needed. I should be able to have that information in situ to be able to make real-time risk decision-making and ultimately improve uh, workplace health and safety 
and workplace efficiency, productivity, reduce costs by doing that. So that's my view of the future. We're already seeing some businesses uh, doing that. There's digital roadmaps um, going that way. And uh, I certainly think the health and safety professionals of the world in particular have the ability to um, have a look at their digital health and safety strategy and see how they could improve as well. So I think drops is a massive part of that. And I truly believe that with a connected worker strategy and um, dropped objects, the way that we've been going and managing them over the last you know, 10, 15, 20 years, the same incidents have been occurring. Maybe this is our opportunity to do something quite significantly different and change the trajectory uh, you know, for good. Great. That's my vision. Oh, <laughs> well, um, I, I'm not sure which one comes first, uh, rigs that are uh, completely autonomous <laughs> or, but uh, no, I, I think certainly, certainly this is, uh, this is a very good, uh, good, good, good move. And um, I think one of the roles for, for the Drops Asia chapter is kind of to try to find technology like this and, and stimulate the ad adoption. When we talked about this earlier, um, you know, you gave many examples of companies adopting this, but we couldn't really find anyone who specifically looked at this, this from drops. Um, anyone watching this and, and, and gets in, excited into uh, trying it out, um, I would love to hear from you um, and, and get some use cases. Uh, and then um, we revisit this in, in a future, future webinar. Um, at the same time, uh, for anyone who has further questions uh, to Cameron, we'll put the, your contact details uh, underneath in the, in the YouTube uh, form, uh, so you can reach out to, to, to Cameron. Um, yeah, with that, thanks very much, Cameron. And um, well, I look forward to seeing uh, this progress further. Thanks very much, Joachim. I really appreciate what you're doing at Drops Asia. And uh, oh, that really is the bell telling me it's time to go. Um, but so thanks very much and uh, hope to catch up with you soon.